Once you've carried out your investigation, or even while you're carrying out your investigation, you are going to need to be recording results. A really good student is probably going to have a blank table ready before they start collecting data to put it straight into. I would suggest always use Excel. You've got all the mathematical functions, you can paste it into Word, or print it out into a handwritten report if you still do that. But your result, you need a table of your results. Now again, you need to tell people what your table actually is. If we have no idea, you will not do well. You need to tell people what you changed, what you measured, and where, in what species. You're going to have your raw data. If you have temperature here, your units would go at the top. If you then have, for example, volume of gas, you'd put your unit at the top again. Now this is where we've got to be really careful. If you put 5.1 milliliters here, 3.8 milliliters here, and then 2 milliliters here, there's a problem. You use the same instruments, you need the same accuracy. That's got to be 2.0 in order that all your data here has the same accuracy. And if we fill in all of that data, we have a data table, we have got common accuracy, common significant figures or common decimal point with all our data because we collected it all with the same instruments. You then need more than this. You would never graph all of your data. You're going to graph an average, only an average. So if I work out my three averages, 5.3 milliliters, 3.5, 2.15, what's the problem here? There's an extra significant figure, an extra decimal place. We've got to be consistent. So we would round that. When I graph this, what I'm going to graph is only my temperatures and my averages. Because I'm not interested in individual data points here. If one's really strange, I might comment on it in my conclusion. But I'm interested in the overall pattern. So my beautifully done on a computer graph, the thing I changed is generally across the bottom, going up in even increments. What I've measured, up the side. I don't need to start at zero. In this case, I think I will. At 5, we've got 5.3. 10, we've got 3.5. 15, 2.2. With money to graph. There's a bit more we need to do to actually get good grades again. What is this? Temperature, degrees Celsius. Up the side, volume of gas in milliliters. We need a title. What we changed, what we measured, and in what. And finally, guys, we need a light of best fit. Points on a graph? Nah. Join the dots with a ruler? Nah, that's grade 6 stuff. Not even. You need a smooth curve through your data points. That reflects my data point. That's not great. Hey, I'm trying to do this on a computer now. One thing, in sciences, you need at least four bots bars on your graph to show a trend. This experiment would not be suitable for grade 9 and 10 science. You only have three temperatures. You only have three points on your graph. If you ended up with, for example, this, we don't know which point is the error. Is there supposed to be a curve like this? Possible. Or is this point an error and our line of best fit should be this? Or is this point an error? Our line should be like this. With three points, you can't tell. So in good science, high school science, you need at least four data points in order to have done your job well. Go back to how this graph should be. Smooth curve through the points. You also need to make a mention of any processing you did. Show a sample calculation. The only processing here, averages. Probably between your table and graph, you should have a sh an example calculation. Between your table and graph, you should probably have an example calculation showing your readers how you did this. If you used a computer, you can say, I use the average function on Microsoft Excel 2010. Have you told people how you calculated? Yes. You need to make that clear. Well guys, there's one thing I forgot to mention here. In your results section, we talked about a data table, showing your numbers, showing your data. These are numbers. That is quantitative data. You're going to have your numbers, your table. But to do well, you need more observations, things you notice along the way that ha might help explain what you saw. You need qualitative data. It might be something as simple as 
might be something as simple as at 10 degrees my seeds ended up being covered in mold could that affect germination rate if you've got a clear pattern with everything except 10 degrees you now have an excuse oops I mean you have a reason for the results you got you look at your graph from further down here's an example here's the trend you got temperature degrees Celsius if you've written something down that says my 10 degrees Celsius treatments were different you have a reason now to say yeah. problem outlier I would exclude it and my line of best fit is here without a reason it's difficult to exclude it might just be something I can't control I didn't know about but you should always be writing down some observation some people might find the percentage of germinated seeds was a hundred percent for everything I left it too long but they were all different sizes the fact that some are bigger probably suggests they germinated earlier that just might be something to say well it all looks like there's a trend more work should be done count the seeds earlier so in a way it's a section for making excuses later for explaining what you see but your results do need both sections